Welcome to an episode of Let's Eat Orlando with Amy Drew and Biggie. Uh, this is episode one, I guess, is what we'll call it. We had and zero. Yeah, we did zero. We've done zero. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one. And then now welcome to episode one. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, the real Orlando. Uh, Amy Drew. Very I, exciting. I got really to see. Really exciting. Uh, yeah, some pretty crazy, awesome stuff. Uh, super excited to see. I don't know if you, uh, if you had the opportunity, but um, somebody feed Phil a Netflix series, uh, season seven, episode six, uh, featured um, are the city beautiful, and the episode was called the Real Orlando, and Amy Drew was in it, uh, and I and I kind of think that she had played a big part in all of this. So I kind of want to chat with her. It takes uh, a village. I played a part in it. Well, and that's what we're going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about. And I know that you've done. I know you've written about it in the Sentinel. I know you've had. You know, please I know, go read it. Go read yes. my story. I know <laughs> you've been to. You had like a kind of like a Q and A, eat and eat a. I guess eat Q and A at Crocante, one of the locations that they did. Uh, you know that Phil went to. But um, so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. So can you kind of give people a little bit of a backstory of like how you and Phil actually met? Uh, Phil and I met because some people, I suppose an agency maybe, contacted me months ahead of his book appearance, which I did not know he was on a book tour. I know Phil, not, I don't know Phil, but I've watched the show is what yeah. I mean. And so when they reached out to me and they said, hey, he's going to be in your city, would you be the moderator? I was like, oh my gosh, of course, that was so exciting, even though I had never done anything like this in my life and was terrified. I was like, I want to meet Phil and I want to be able to showcase the city. Um, so yeah, of course I would do it. And so we met, you know, 15 minutes or maybe a little bit longer than that before I was out in front of the whole packed house at the Plaza Live, which was terrifying, but, but amazing, amazing. Did so I have a question about that. I, I know that's not what the shows that we're, we're going to talk about, but I kind of am kind of curious when you do something like that, like one of those, like a project like that, where you're, you're going and you're talking with him, do they give you kind of questions to kind of ask, or are they expecting you to kind of like, kind of lead the no. conversation? How did that kind of work? I can only speak for this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I've for never done this doing. before. Yeah, but yeah. for this occasion, they basically presented me with, um, a list of questions that would be okay. So I'm pretty sure Phil, he is an entertainer. Um, he had, I'm sure, lots of stories prepared. So it was just, here's this massive list of questions. You randomly choose whatever is interesting to you and Phil will answer them. So, oh, that's you know, there's, I think that there's a level, my guess, and this is speculation, is that Phil has answers to all these questions. And then based on who he's interacting with and where he is, there could be variation in the answers, but he has like more than half of what he's going to say kind of wrote, you know, to some degree. And then you have a conversation around it. So it was just up to me to pick whatever I felt like asking him. When, and I didn't have to tell them beforehand. I just. Yeah. You just got to pick since you had it. What? So once that happened, obviously I know, I know you and I have talked and you guys kind of like hit it off. Uh, so we did, we did. It was nice. So when that happened, was there, was there a time where you're like, Hey, you should eat at Orlando or did he approach you to ask you about places in Orlando or how did that kind of that dialogue kind of go? He and his nephew who was with him, um, came to introduce themselves. I was in the dressing room making air quotes for those of you not watching, um, at the Plaza live, which also kind of looks like the room from hostel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not a fancy room. <laughs> Um, they have a full length mirror though, and a chair. And that was really all that mattered. So, um, they came in, they had a bag full of peanut butter cups from some or other fancy chocolate shop. And we ate some dark chocolate peanut butter cups. And he just told me a little bit about what he'd done in Orlando so far. And he just asked me a lot of questions about what was out there. And, you know, amen. That's one of the few things that I'm good at answering is what restaurants are there in Orlando. And he asked different questions about, you know, different things. And I guess, you know, enough was peaked that he was like, Hey, um, we have a few hours tomorrow morning. Would you show, show us around a little bit? But I mean, tomorrow, the next day was Sunday and it was morning. So there was a limit and he only had so much time. 
and he knew what area he was going to be close to. So it's not like I could shuttle him from Mount Dora to Sanford to Kissimmee and hit the whole thing. It was like, I'm going to have to do yeah. this one and done and show him enough. And hopefully, you know, he would like what he saw. And so when you and tasted, so when you went on a Sunday, so basically that was like, kind of like, Oh crap. I got well, I like had Yankees tickets. I had no plans to do this. I was going to a, the, the home opener for spring training the next day. So I had no plans to do this. And then you were like, oh, crap, I got to now I got to like not only roll the decks, figure out who's and then I'm assuming when you did this, this was not we're not talking yet. Like this is just like preliminary just going out to eat. This is not like Phil's coming to record a show. It was no, just no, you, no, it was just was you no... and Phil eating, eating and, in Orlando and, Jeremy and his nephew and Jeremy. It was me, my boyfriend and Phil and his nephew. And we went and ate at places. <laughs> and then when you ate at places, how many of the places, and obviously we're, I'm all about name dropping good places that you recommended, but I'm just kind of curious, how many places did you guys end up going to uh, during that, during those three hours? All of the places that we went to during those three hours were featured on the show. That's what I figured. Which and is I, cool. And then, and then I gave him an added list and other people that he was in contact with had yeah. given him lists. And I'm sure that there were probably overlapping suggestions, my list yeah. versus other people's lists. I have no idea how many lists yeah. he had, but I know that he had, he had more than just mine. It was not just me. No, no, no. Yeah. But I, I will listen. I, I, once again, I know you're very, you're very humble, but I will, I know for a fact, and I will say that you helped and we're very instrumental in this whole aspect because of the fact, and that obviously Phil was because he That's realized very kind. it takes you know, a village. It does it take takes a village. A village. It does take a village, but the mere fact that, and that was one of the big things I was curious about was like how many of the places. And then I was also kind of curious how many places were there any like, so, and then we can kind of, if you want, we can kind of mention some of the places that you guys went to in case they haven't seen the episode. And if there's anything that you kind of want to add, you know, from, you know, from that, that we maybe didn't see on TV, but I was kind of curious of when you, was there any place that you kind of were like, Ooh, I really wish I would have been able to. It just did not. It just did not work out when I originally yeah, brought them. Yeah, it was them. Sunday morning. <laughs> there, were not, there were plenty of places that I, you know, would have loved to have taken him, but they yeah. are not open on Sunday morning. Correct. You know, and they were not. So there were, you know, I knew that, I, you know, I had to work within the, within the scope of what he offered. You know, it was no question that I was going to, you know, pass on the Yankees game. There was no question that yeah. I was going to take Phil um, around if that was what he asked me to do. You know, there was no question. I did. The prospect of Orlando being on somebody feed Phil was not taken lightly. That was an exciting thing. And if I could help to do anything to help that happen, I was going to do it. Um, we went to East End Market. We started there. I had warned Late at night, I had gotten in touch with Matt Hinckley. I told him what was up and that we were coming. So he was there. Um, he was the only person that I peeped at East End Market. And then while we met Matt and while we were, he was prepping some things for us to eat. And I showed him around East End Market. I showed him Tonda's stall. I showed him Gideon's, which of course had a line, yeah, you know, already, yeah. out the door. And he was looking at that. And I took him, uh, we, you know, he saw the, the brunch hordes gathering outside of Domu. I took him upstairs and I showed him the neighbors, even though it was closed, we looked in the door and I kind of told him about the Domu lab concept and everything up there. And then we went downstairs, um, sat in the courtyard and, and Matt brought us some sandwiches and things for Phil to try. That's, uh, that's awesome that you, uh, that it kind of lined up that way. And I think it's awesome. And, and like I said, it's super instrumental. The fact that like you got to show him things that, you know, we want people in Orlando, like the foodies in of Orlando that like love and talk about like, Hey, there's more than the theme park stuff. Like you were able to show him areas. Um, and I, and he, I, I will tell you that like watching that episode, I got emotional watching that episode numerous times. Uh, and it was like, I, and at one point I was like, why am I crying? Why am I crying? And a lot of it was like, <laughs> things like, like I got excited when I saw you on TV. Um, because I, I'm always, I always think that like, you're always in the background, like, you know, singing everyone's praises and, and, and being like that spotlight for everyone. 
And so I loved the fact that you were on uh, and that you were being showcased. I loved that how they did it, where it was like they had different people all throughout the show, you know. And so it was like you had a, a great representation of Orlando and the great people of Orlando that and so i thought like everything from like ricky lee you know I, like it was like it was just so great to be able to see you know anna on there and it just kind of like and then like even the charity side with like the you know with the black bee honey uh i, I there was just it was just such a great episode um to be able to do that uh i, I think that's it was amazing to kind of be able to see when you were when it came down to filming like how long of a filming is that? Like, especially like during your segment, like when you were oh eating my gosh, we at East filmed, End, like how long were you guys there? We for? shot for such a long time, and it was like the tiniest right? bit. It's because just... I mean, yeah, it was the tiniest bit because you can't, you know, they need a lot. It's just, it, you know, it's 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 the video version of what I do. I yeah. I do interviews that are sometimes an hour long, and I have to leave so much good stuff on the cutting room floor because you can't include it all. And that's the same for them. And I'm sure it was the same everywhere that they shot. But I had lunch with Phil um, the other day. He was in town for with his daughter on Friday, her boyfriend for yes, for their book. Um, for their children's book, which is really cool. And What's so the he children's and I book's had name. We might as well plug it in. And it keep is it called this. Just Try It. Yep. Um, which is such a cool idea because I this is the I feel this way about adults. You know, I get, there's nothing to me that turns me off more than somebody who just says, I don't like that. And you say to them and they're like 30 and you're like, well, did you ever try it? No. I'm like, you know, when you're five, I'll give you a pass, but I even want five-year-olds to try it. But when you're 40 and you're saying that, no bueno. No, I agree. You got to try things. I agree. So I think it's, I think it's just a phenomenal concept to have this book like just so, try it for can kids. i ask where you guys went to lunch um, did you guys go to one of the places that you were on that was on the show featured or did you know we different? went to sato okay. which is now open for lunch again on friday and saturday yeah. so i was like you know let's mix it up so and it was very weird because his timing again was like every single place when he wanted to go to lunch was like in there between lunch and dinner period and closed so but then things got shifted and we were able to make it work. So That's, um, that but he had awesome. a very little bit of time. He had like 45 minutes to eat. So, so we went to Sado and we had fun and, um, and it was great. But what I was leading up to in all this was that he said that he felt like the Orlando episode was the most surprising episode of season seven, you know, he, and, and everybody that I know who was involved with the show is very happy with it. Yeah, I don't. I can't see anyone. I mean, obviously, I. I'll preface it. Uh, you will always find someone that's going to complain or someone that's going to say something, but I think it was an amazing, uh, a really just a great representation of our city and like all the different elements of food, um, and just the different cultures and the like the melting of of what are, we provide as a city and. Hundred percent. I, think I that, look. You could do a season on Orlando. You could, if, if they did that, they could do a season on Orlando. I would be the first one to champion that, but Amy you Drew, only the get host. one episode. You only get one episode and, and, and everything can't be in it. Correct. But I'm glad that what was in it was in it and that people will come here and they'll try these businesses and they'll go to, to visit Matt or Trina or Marie or, you know, anybody in the episode. And when they're there, they'll say, Hey, where do you go for X? And where do you, and they'll get more recommendations from people who are part of the real Orlando to the rest of Orlando. And I, I just think it's great, you know? And you made a friend with Phil, you're friends with Phil. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's awesome. I think it's, yeah, it's uh, nice. it's, it's definitely been, uh, one of those things where I think that I, th you know, I, like I said, it's a, it's a great showcase. I think it'll be, uh, I think people will, will appreciate it and love it. I think it's interesting because when you watch the different episodes of that season, it's like all these places <laughs> around the world. And then there's like Orlando. I know. Uh, and that's yeah. why he's right. It was the most surprising. And I, and, and it should be noted just that his brother, Richard is wonderful. They're, other producers were wonderful. Everybody on the crew, including amazing local people, the local sound guys who are from Orlando, everybody just involved with the production was just 
a joy to work with. And, uh, and it was just really cool to be a part of Do you know how long it took them? I mean, I know you weren't part of the, you weren't there filming with them all the day, but do you know, have any idea of how long the length of time it was for him to be able to produce? Was it like a week's worth of time? They were here in for Orlando? about, if I remember correctly, because we were in touch, yeah. they were here for basically the better part of a week, at least five days they were yeah, here. But I, was gonna I, say, I don't know exactly. I was going to say. It was a week, the better part of a week. Because when I talked to uh, Casey uh, from uh, Band vs. Food and they did Orlando, that's kind of how long it was like four, it was like four to five days they were in town for. I would say that it was, and... pro- I, I can't guarantee you, but yeah. I would say they were here for at least five days, possibly a couple more. Okay. That's awesome. I can't what, remember. What was your most memorable? What was your most memorable thing that, you know, obviously when during filming or just this whole experience, what do you think has been their most memorable uh, thing? That's a tough one. I haven't really thought about the answer to that. I think just knowing that Orlando is going to be on the maps of people where it wasn't before is the coolest thing ever. That there are people, because there's always going to be people who come to Disney and the other, and Universal, there's always going to be room for that. And there's always going to be a segment of those people who want to step outside the parks. But I think that this will make more of them want to do that. And it might actually even bring people who are not really that interested in the parks to come here and try the food we have, you know, and, you know, um, Christina from go Epicurista yeah. said the other day, something along the lines of, you know, this is something that hits really hard for those of us in the community who have been championing the Orlando food scene for 10 or 15 years. Uh, and I'm included in that. I've only been in the Sentinel for just about five, but I was at, you know, I was doing it for other venues yeah. before that. And we all have known what a tremendous gathering storm this city was and how much talent there was here. And to finally see people on the world stage recognizing that, you know, Beard and Michelin and Phil um, and other places, Food Network's been here for a while. I don't want to miss them. You know, I don't want to. Yeah, they've been great. Uh, dismiss them either. They've been here. Yeah. Um, but just to finally see that recognition starting to come for the people who have been beating the drum for Orlando for that long is pretty amazing. Yeah, no, that's that's 100 percent the reason why and it's there's like, a lot of people. There's a lot of people who. Yeah, I think that we get insular, you, me and people who are more foodie oriented. But there are a lot of people in the city who don't even realize what a good food scene we have. Correct. And I hope that this wakes them up to it also. Correct. Yeah, no. And I think that's kind of one of the things where and we'll talk about it on future episodes, um, like the foodie awards and things like that, like where it kind of gives does give some perspective of some of these places, even though, you know, sometimes you and I um, live and breathe it every Every day so we forget that not everybody is like immersed in correct, the way correct, we are <laughs> correct and i think that's kind of the big thing i mean there's a there's definitely a lot of people that you can follow and i think that this was a, a great um opportunity to be able to kind of see i don't know if you want to spend uh, a few minutes on some of the on some of the places that you know that phil got to go visit um i know that like you know i just to name a few and so that way we can put on the show notes as well uh crocante Hinkley's, uh, Gideon's, uh, La Femme de Fou- Yep, Sampaguitas. Cooking with Kim. Seven Bites. Seven bon- Bites. Bon Mi Boys. Bon Mi Boy at Tian Hung Market. Yep. Yes. Capra. Uh, Capra. Capra, sorry. And then he <laughs> also, which I thought was great, the fact that he did Airboat Ride. Which is very <laughs> a very a very floor a very central Florida like I I've taken friends that lived in Chicago to airboat ride just because I was like hey let's do something that even a, a tour like a tourist a local tourist would want to do uh, Kennedy Space Center um, I love the the segment with the Black Bee Honey as well as a matter of fact my wife actually um, ended up that being so cool. in that. She was actually at a farmer's market um, recently that, and they were there. And so she bought one of their sample packs of their honey and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it is, it is definitely was a good, um, a good little snapshot. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why we have, obviously we have, we're doing this podcast is because we want to, we want to give more snapshots and more, you know, props and love to different uh, food segments around the city. Uh, and I think that this is a, uh, you know, 
it, this was a great, a, a, what a great way to, to kind of start off with like as our first episode, but also a great way to be able to kind of showcase, uh, you know, kind of one of those things where people can watch it and be like, wow, I didn't know about this. Or, I mean, it'd be kind of hard not to, cause I think everyone talked about it uh, in Orlando and you guys did a really good job. Cause I saw like everything from, you know, like follow us and look at all the places you can eat at. And then like the fact that you guys did um, the, you know, got to eat at Crocante and have the Q and a, how was that event? By the way, how did that, how did that turn out go? And that was so nice. Um, so many subscribers to the Sentinel showed up. Um, Tonda showed up from La Femme de Fromage. Yeah. And so it was sort of impromptu, but she was able to answer some questions that people had to and talk a little bit about her experience. That was super cool. Thank you, Tonda. Um, it's really awesome. It was just, it was really fun and people got, it was, I think it was a great deal. They got a lot of food. Um, they got to taste, I don't know if it was all, it was certainly most, if not all of the things that Phil had full, huge slabs of porchetta, Did chicharron, he have the octopus? Did they have the octopus, octopus, octopus tacos? Yep. All of it. That all looked of amazing. It. Was there a I barely question? ate. I barely ate, but Yamwell sent me home with a little doggy bag, which was well, nice. Oh, that's good. Oh, well, as a, as a true Spanish person would. Um, what uh, was there a common <laughs> question? What was like a common question that you guys kind of got a lot of? Did you, was there something that was common or very popular with that? Um, no, I don't think anything particularly surprising was asked. It was, I mean, it was all very nice. People were curious about Phil, about. Yeah, a lot of the things you asked, how how did I end up, you know, meeting him um, and all that stuff. Basically the same thing, which you can, again, if you go to the Sentinel and you read the story, pretty much the whole story is in there or a lot yeah. of it. Everything kind of goes. This is kind of like a, a little extra that you can kind of now, if you read this, you're listening to this, it also hopefully will intrigue you to go onto the Sentinel and, and actually read it uh, and be able to do that. And then at the same time, it'll, it'll all kind of connect uh, and it'll make you appreciate that much more when you're listening and watching the episode um, on Netflix. I know I watched it. I think I watched it like it premiered on a Friday and I was pretty much on Friday morning. As soon as everyone left, I was sat and watched it. Um, it took me a while. I have problems watching myself, listening to myself. I'm, you know, I'm not good at that. So, well, I, I definitely love it. I think, I think this is a good, uh, a good, a good stopping point, unless you got some uh, additional points that you want to talk about this, uh, about this episode, um, about somebody feed Phil and, and the real Orlando. And, uh, no, but no, I would just say if anybody out here is listening to this, who loves the Orlando food scene, tell people. Yeah. Just keep telling people how good it is. Keep telling them your favorite spot for a burger, your favorite spot for bun mi, your favorite spot for ramen, whatever it is, because there's a lot of places. There are a lot of options. It's hard to pick just one, you know, um, and maybe showcase some of the things that you love that weren't on the show. Yeah. And give those places some love, too. Correct. Yeah, definitely always keep showing if you if you like a place. How about I would say the tip I would say is if you love a place or you like a place and you're like, wow, this place is really good or the owner's great or the food is good. Like tell people about it. If you don't like it, you guess what? Don't say anything about it. Just just well, keep it to yourself. Uh, someone you might know. like it. Yeah, because someone may like it and then you're, you know, there's no reason to give. It's better to just give the compliment to the, the ones you like. If you don't like it, don't say anything nice. Don't, you know, you don't have anything nice to say. Don't say anything at all. Um, well, that's our that's our episode for, th for this week for you to check out. Um, you know, obviously subscribe, tell your friends, uh, give Amy Drew a, a follow. You'll see it on the show notes. You'll see uh, you'll see my contact information as well. Make sure to give me a follow, uh, but definitely make sure to tell your friends about uh, Let's Eat Orlando. And, you know, thank you so much for listening. Thank you.